Hi guys, I'm gonna explain my process video today and I honestly thought this project was going to be a lot easier than it was. I had a little hard time trying to keep time management up and it wasn't that the project alone was very hard, it was just that I didn't manage out my time correctly enough to feel like I wasn't stressing about it every week. But I'm going to go through my process of how I did my photo. This is my process video for my image. So the first step, I took two photos and I wanted the bottom of the one image that was blurred out and the top of the other image that was blurred out. And I wanted to completely focus on the watch, so I took two different photos so certain parts were in focus and certain parts were out of focus. And so I decided that it was going to be easiest to take the two blurred parts, as you can see. For the second step, I combined the photos. And so I took the photo that doesn't have a watch in it, and then I put a layer mask on it and took the black brush. And then went over it to, to pop out the parts of the image that I wanted to come through from the other image. And so I took the... The blurred out mountains and then the the watch that and then the shadows from the watch and so you can see here that's where I took the black brush to the layer mask and then applied it and that's what happened for the third step I wanted to make the object shine so I wanted the watch to have a more shiny effect for this I added a completely blank layer and filled it in with black and then I turn the filter to color dodge and then what do you do is you take a white brush and then you turn the flow down the whole way down to like 4% and then you can go over the parts and you get a shiny effect. For the fourth step I, want, I use the clone tool because I wanted to completely get rid of the bushes and the greenery. And so what I did was I just went back and forth from the mountains and then the desert part and then went back and forth between the two in order to make it even out and then so there's no in between of the two. And so then for my fifth step I wanted to create a gloomy sky because in the photo that I was emulating it had a gloomy sky and I wanted to do that myself. But in El Paso, where I live, we don't really get gloomy skies. It's mainly just sunny, so I had to go base it off of a pure blue sky, as you can see, and then just color it in. And what I did was I mainly just used a brush and then went from light and dark. And then I took the clone tool and just kind of went over it with a very, very low um, flow. To get it the effect that I had and then I went over the mountain effect to give it a kind of a misty cloudy vibe as you can see and for my sixth step I adjusted the hue and the saturation and so I adjusted the hue to negative three percent or negative three the saturation to plus 15 and then the lightness to negative 16 and this just kind of made it to give more of a gloomy feel to the rest of the photo, so it kind of flowed all together. For the seventh step, I added words, because in the photo I was emulating, it had the hill figure title, but I didn't do a hill figure watch, because I don't have a hill figure watch, so I did a Nixon, and so I put Nixon, and what I did was I, uh, I spaced out each letter, so it wasn't completely full, and then conjoined together and then I changed the opacity to 51 so that you could see a little more little more of the background and it wasn't just full on full letters of white and it gives it more of a misty cloudy vibe and then here's my final image and I overall am very proud of it and yeah that's all thank you